Stacking a single piece of hardware on top of itself is really nothing new, although most of the time you'll hear about it with regards to GPUs. It's actually not even that uncommon anymore to run multiple GPUs. But believe it or not, there are actually motherboards that come with dual processor sockets, meaning you can plug two separate CPUs into them. Now we know how a gamer's mind works. You see a new technology or piece of hardware, and you start wondering whether you'll need it for gaming and what improvements it'll bring. After all, you want your gaming experience to be the best it could possibly be. So naturally, you want to know what's worth investing in. So we'll give you the answer straight away. No, it's as simple as that. You do not need two CPUs for gaming. You just don't. There's no benefit to it. We've already made a video on how many CPU cores you'll need for gaming. And in this video, we've said that you only need four CPU cores at the moment. These are your i5s and your Ryzen 5s. So you don't even need an i7 for gaming on a single GPU. That said, dual processor motherboards are definitely not a gimmick. They have their target demographics and we'll spend the rest of the video talking about what it is they bring to the table, so stick around if you're curious. Let's start with the obvious. A dual CPU motherboard will allow you to use two CPUs simultaneously. This doubles the number of cores you'll have at your disposal, which means better multitasking and overall computing power. And it also increases your RAM memory and PCI bandwidth. So you'll have more extension cards and a maximum RAM capacity of 256 gigabytes. It wasn't so long ago that most people didn't have this many gigabytes in their HDD storages. But like we've said, the important thing to ask here is, how big are the benefits to gaming? When it comes to running games, the CPU does many things. It controls pretty much everything that's going on in the game. Enemy AI, actions and reactions taking place in the game world, reading and loading assets from the storage, all of it gets processed in the CPU. But while this may sound like a lot, most modern multi-core CPUs can accomplish this rather effortlessly. The most important thing that the CPU does is it tells the GPU what to render and when. And this is why you need to make sure that your CPU is good enough to push your GPU to its limits. If there's a big computing power gap between these two pieces of hardware, then a portion of your GPU's capacity will literally be doing nothing because the CPU cannot keep up. This process is what is known as bottlenecking, and it's really the only thing you need to worry about when picking a CPU. However, just to put this into perspective that you don't need a monstrously powerful CPU for gaming to avoid bottlenecking, we'll let you in on a fun little piece of trivia. The most powerful Intel i7 CPU will only slightly bottleneck 4 GTX 1080 Ti cards in SLI. And that's just with one CPU, and it's not even the most powerful one. You still have i9 processors to think about before even turning to dual CPU motherboards. So trust us when we say that you can't go wrong with i5 and Ryzen 5 for most gaming rigs. And even for the most high-end ones, you won't need anything bigger than an i7. Next, let's take a look at what role RAM plays in all of this and how much of it you'll need for gaming. Whenever you see a loading screen, what's actually happening is that your CPU is reading game assets off the HDD and SSD and loading them into the RAM. This is because the RAM has insanely faster read speeds than HDDs and SSDs. Most people know that RAM is stupidly fast, but you rarely hear the actual numbers. Consider this. If a modern HDD has a read speed of around 100 megabytes per second, and it does, this isn't hypothetical, and most SSDs read approximately 500 megabytes per second, how fast do you think RAM is? Well, a modern DDR4 RAM module running at 3200 gigahertz, which is the gaming standard right now, has a data transfer speed of 25 gigabytes per second. But let's get off the hype train for a moment. If a game is properly optimized, it will run absolutely smoothly on 8 gigabytes of RAM. You could also make an argument for getting 16 gigabytes of RAM for gaming to future-proof it. So the fact that these motherboards up the RAM capacity all the way to 256 gigabytes is just not important for gaming. It's impressive, but it's completely irrelevant for us as gamers. And the last perk of these motherboards is that they come equipped with additional PCIe slots. These are just used for graphics cards and a wide range of expansion cards. But again, this really isn't all that important for gaming. 
It's mostly used by servers that need to process massive amounts of data. And like we've said, the latest i7 will just barely bottleneck 4 GTX 1080 Ti GPUs, so a regular ATX or EATX motherboard will have more than enough slots and bandwidth for gaming. Finally, we'd like to end this video by saying that no game has ever been developed to utilize two CPUs at once. In fact, just 10 years ago when you already had multi-core CPUs, developers were still making games that only made use of a single core. So more likely than not, one of these two CPUs would just be sitting idly by while you gamed and let the other one do all the work. The only way for a dual CPU motherboard to not be a waste of money for gaming is if you plan on streaming, although most streamers use two PCs, one for gaming and one for streaming. They could technically just as well use a dual CPU motherboard instead. But barring this, they just aren't meant for gaming and only heavy-duty servers and high-end workstations that need the vast computing and multitasking power of two CPUs could benefit from these motherboards. And there you have it, the viability of a dual processor motherboard for gaming, or lack thereof. Hopefully this was enough to dissuade you from buying one of this just so you could run the newest AAA games. It's a wonderful piece of technology, but it just wasn't made for us. In any case, we hope that you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did. And as always, we'll see you in the next video.